Good evening. Welcome back to Valley Baptist Church. So glad you could join us for our wed our Sunday evening service. If you please turn to number twenty in your hymnals, two zero. When I see the blood, <coughs> the blood. <coughs> Genesis chapter number 18. Will you find it with please stand for the reading of God's word? Genesis chapter number 18. Genesis chapter number 18. And we're going to read verses 20 and 21. Genesis 8. Genesis 8. And verse 20. Genesis chapter 8, verse number 20. Let's read it all together. 20 and 21. All together. Here we go. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled the sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. 
For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for bring, uh, bringing us all back together again. Thank you that Denny's back with his family, Lord. Thank you that uh, everyone is here. Pray for those that are not here. Uh, they're uh, doing something, Lord. They're busy or they, they have something to do. Uh, we thank you for these that are here, Lord. We pray for those that are watching uh, this video later on. Also, Lord God, that you encourage them and strengthen them. And thank you, Lord God, that uh, we are the family of God. And Father God, what we're missing, uh, we miss the family, Lord. And it's wonderful to rejoice to be back together again with the family of God. We love you. Thank you. Holy Spirit of God, guide me. Lead me in this message. And I pray that it would be an encouragement and that it would be uh, something that we can take home and something that we can use on a daily basis. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, as you notice, we, 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 uh, we introduced an altar uh, right here at the, at the front. And at first I was against it because uh, um, to me there wasn't enough room. And uh, we're trying to figure out how we're going to fit it in there without having to lose any chairs in the back. And the key was the mat. The mat was the key. It was a five by eight. And once we took that out, then we had all kinds of room move backwards and, and fit that altar in there and this is the reason I'm preaching on this it's uh this is the first mention of the word altar in the bible it is right here in verse number 20 and Noah building an altar unto the Lord okay the first mention of the altar the word altar in the bible is right here in our text now no doubt Cain and Abel they also offered offerings on altars but the first mention of the word altar is right here. And the altar in the Hebrew is translated a step or the word up. A step or the word up. And after the uh, flood, after the flood, once the Lord had uh, flooded the earth and everyone died and all the animals died, okay? Uh, and then the, dry, the land uh, dried again after being in the ark uh, for all those days, the, uh, 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 Moses sent out a, uh, a, uh, a dove, and the dove did not return. And that's how we, he knew there was land already, because the water had receded. And so uh, he went into the ark by the command of God. He did not do anything by himself. Everything he did was by commandments from God. And so he had to wait on God for, to tell him what to do. And so... After the water had receded and the land had dried, the Lord spoke to Noah uh, in, in Genesis uh, 8. Look at verses 15 and 16. 8, 15, and 16. The Bible says, And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. So another commandment. Uh, he would have stayed in there. Okay, Noah would have stayed in the ark. Because he was waiting on God to tell him what to do. And that's the lesson that we can we need to learn as Christians. Is that we need to wait on God to tell us what to do. We need to wait on God to guide us and lead us uh, every day of our lives. Okay? We need to wait on the Lord. We often get in trouble because we do things without asking the Lord and not waiting on the Lord. And we get ourselves in trouble. And then the Lord has to come and rescue us from our troubles. So after the water had receded, God spoke to him and said, Go forth of the ark. And so he went forth out of the ark. And the very first thing that he did after he was on the earth, the Bible says in verse 21, And the Lord, uh, excuse me, verse 20, And Noah built an altar unto the Lord. Okay? He built an altar unto the Lord. Now, right here, this command, this, this building of this altar unto the Lord, uh, was not a command from God. This is something that Noah did on his own. Okay? Another lesson that we can learn. We don't have to wait that we're blessed to thank God. We can thank God anytime. For any reason. Okay? We don't have, we don't have to wait for him to give us the blessing and then we can come and thank him for the blessing. No. You can thank him even when you don't have the blessing. You can thank him for 
Uh, anything that happens in your life, okay? Uh, James tells us that we should uh, count it all joy when we go through trials. We should count it all joy, okay? And we often don't think about thanking the Lord for, uh, I just I just twisted my ankle. Oh, thank you, Lord, for that pain. Oh, thank you, Lord, for my swollen ankle. We don't often think like that. But the truth of the matter is, anything that happens in your life, God has allowed it for a reason. Okay, God's going to use that to teach you a lesson. And so, right here, Noah takes it upon himself to thank the Lord with burnt sacrifices on an altar. Okay, Noah is thanking the Lord for the deliverance of the deliverance of his family from the certain death of the flood. Remember, the entire world died. But Noah and his family were saved because they were in the ark. And the ark, again, the ark of the, uh, of the, the, ark of the <coughs> animals were in, it's the same picture as the uh, tabernacle, where everything in the tabernacle points to Jesus. The ark is the same way. It's a type of Christ. And you notice, they had to be to be safe from the flood, they had to be in the ark. And you have to be in Christ in order to be safe. Okay? And so, uh, no, Noah did not go into the ark when the animals were already in there. He waited on the Lord. The Lord said, go in. And so he went in. And the Lord closed the door. Okay? So he waits over here. Even though the dove has not come back, he knows that there's dry land. He could have just took it upon himself. Okay, let's offload everybody. No, he waited on the Lord. The Lord said, okay, it's time to go. And then he went out. Now, right here, the Lord did not give him a command to do anything, but he took it upon himself from his own heart, from his own willing heart to thank the Lord for delivering his family, his wife, his sons, and their wives. And so it, it was a burnt offering, which is a, a type of animal sacrifice uh, upon an altar and uh, where the smoke goes up because the the sacrifice is completely burned completely burned and so the smoke goes up and Noah did this of his own free will because he was grateful for God's deliverance he was grateful for God's deliverance okay you know you you give your tithe and you're faithful to give your tithe and you feel good when you give it because you're being obedient, and obedience always gives you joy. But you don't have to uh, do anything for the Lord. You can, you know, if, if you have already given your tithe and, and your offerings, and, and you have some extra money, and you know what? You feel like just putting some money into, into an envelope for no reason at all, you can do that. There is nothing stopping you from doing that, okay? And this is kind of like that. It, it, was, it was not asked for. God, did, God didn't ask him to do anything. He just did it because he was grateful from his heart to the Lord for what he had done and delivering his family. Okay? And the beautiful thing about this is that even though God didn't tell him to do it, the beautiful thing about this is that in verse 21, the Lord accepted it. It was received by God. Verse 21, and the Lord smelled a sweet savor. The Lord was so pleased. He was so pleased that Noah took it upon himself to do this from his own willing heart that he made some changes. Look at the book, what he does in verse 21. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again cur curse the ground anymore for man's sake. Okay? Remember the, the ground was cursed after they ate from the from the fruit of the tree? They cursed the ground. And so the, the offering that came raw was from the ground, which was cursed. So it was a cursed offering. It was not received. It was not accepted by God. Because he didn't do it the way God asked him to. Now, uh, Abel, his brother, did according to the instructions of God, and his was accepted. And uh, the Lord said, I will not. Not again curse the ground. And that just, to me, that's amazing. I will not again curse the ground. So the ground is not cursed. Okay? The ground is not cursed anymore. Jesus, did you hear that? The ground is not cursed anymore. Okay? Because God removed the curse from the ground. And then in verse number 21, it says, For the imagination of man's heart is evil from 
his youth. And the Lord right here, uh, it's, it's not that he didn't know, it's not that he, that he didn't realize, but uh, it was very evident that uh, <clears throat> fallen sinners, uh, there's only one thing you can do, and that's sin. That's all the sinners can do. You cannot do anything until God changes your life. You're just going to be continuing sinning because you're, you're a sinner. You have a fallen nature, and your fallen nature will always come up, always come up. And so uh, he said, neither will I smite anymore everything living as I have done. And the Lord kept his promise, okay? And of course, he gave us the, uh, <coughs> he gave us the, uh, the rainbow as a promise, as a pledge uh, to remind us that he will no longer ever flood the earth, okay? So whenever you see the rainbow, the rainbow is actually, the rainbow is the Lord's rainbow, okay? People try to hijack the, the things of God, but to use them for their own purpose, but the rainbow is God's rainbow. Okay, it's always them bearing God's rainbow. So let's look at the reason uh, the offering was accepted. We'd like to focus on that right here. Verse number 21. The reason the offering was accepted by God. Okay, it was accepted for uh, several reasons. And I, I, I can see four, th four reasons why the, the uh, offering was accepted. The first reason it was accepted uh, because it was offered according to God's instructions, okay? It was offered according to God's instructions. In other words, he did it just like Abel, and Abel was accepted. Noah did it just like Abel. He, they, he did not do it like Cain. He did not, Cain, Cain brought a, a platter of vegetables from the ground because he was a farmer, and that was his offering, okay? Vegetables and fruits and everything, and he thought that God was going to uh, accept that, but both Cain and Abel had received the same instructions from their father, Adam, because God had told Adam what he expected. And so that's why one did it right. And the other one, uh, Cain is known as the father of false religion because he did it. He said, I'm going to do it the way I want to. I know God said to do it this way, but I'm going to do it this way. And so he is uh, the father of false religion. He is the father of a heaven your way religion. <coughs> In Genesis 3.17, the Bible says, And unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of the which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. So here's the, 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 the cursing of the ground. And also in sorrow shalt thou eat up of it all the days of thy life. Now they have to work. Whereas before, <clears throat> they had all the vegetables available to them just for picking. The fruits, just for picking. We went picking uh, Annie's uh, apple farm in, uh, right, right outside of Wilcox. It's a big, big orchard. They have, they have peaches, uh, apples of all kinds. Peaches of different types. I never even heard of. I never knew there was white, white peaches. <laughs> okay, but there's peaches, apricots. Uh, everything is, is really really nice. Uh, when we dropped off our children, our, ch our grandchildren on, on Friday, we got to go there. And so just think about it. Adam and Eve. They had everything at their disposal. But now, since the ground had been cursed, now they have to work. They have to toil. They have to break the ground, and they have to. Uh, dig it out and plant, okay? And they have to fight the weeds and all that in order to live. And that was as a result as the, of the ground being cursed. So think of a difference. You can have everything already there or you have to work for it. Well, because the ground was cursed, they had to work all of their lives, okay? But now God removes, God removes that curse in verse number 21. So it was offered, number one, because it was uh, offered according to God's instructions. Okay? It was offered according to God's instructions. Secondly, it was accepted because it was a perfect offering. It was a perfect offering. Okay? Because, because if you go to uh, Genesis 7, Genesis 7 2, Genesis 7 2, 
when he's bringing the animals into the ark, God tells them in verse number one, uh, Genesis 7, 1, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by, say it, Seven. sevens. You see that? By sevens. Now, <clears throat> I know that you have uh, your, your whole life, your whole life, you, you have always remember, you haven't learned anything about the sevens. You have always only known about the two by twos, right? But look, there's another set of animals that was taken into the ark by sevens. And those were sp for specific uh, uses, okay? So to take to thee by sevens, the male and the female, and of bees that are not clean by twos, male and female. So the unclean were by twos, and the ones that were clean were by sevens. And I tell you that uh, the offering uh, 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 Noah was accepted because it was a perfect, excuse me, because it was uh, offered according to God's instructions, an animal sacrifice. And secondly, uh, the importance of an animal sacrifice, it pointed to Jesus, the Lamb of God, which one day would come and uh, die for the entire world. It will be the ultimate sacrifice once for all. No more sacrifices after that. Okay? Secondly, it was accepted because it was a perfect offering. Why? Well, think about it. Of the clean beast, okay, uh, you can't offer to God of the unclean beast. It has to be clean. So you can only offer from the sevens. You see that? So if you had seven little lambs and he just offered to God right here, which number did he offer? The number seven. The seven lamb. It was a perfect offering. And we went through the numerology, and, and the number seven is the number of perfection. The perfect offering. Okay? And so it, it was a perfect offering because it was offered from the sevens, from the uh, section of animals that were taken in by sevens of the clean animals. Number three, the third reason the offering was accepted by God. Number three, he offered it with a willing heart. He offered it with a willing heart. Even though, even though there were only seven little lambs, okay? Um, Noah could have said, Lord, you expect us to, to refill the, the world with, with only seven lambs, and, and, then, and then I have to take one and offer it to you that only leaves me six to fill up the whole entire world, okay? But that never happened. Because even though there were only seven of these clean beasts to begin the world again, Noah did not hesitate to give the little, le learn a lesson, learn a lesson. He did not hesitate to give the little that he had and offered it unto God. You will be surprised what God can do with the little that you have when you put it in the hands of God, okay? This is why it's so important. You take the little things that you have and put it in the hands of God. Take your little children and put them in the hands of God and see what God can do with them, okay? Uh, he did not hesitate. Uh, it was from a willing heart. He did not hesitate. And that should be our attitude always towards God. We should never hesitate uh, to be willing to offer and to give thanks unto the Lord. For uh, the, the truth is, the very air that we're breathing is His air. Okay, so everything is his. So, you know, once, once you uh, surrender yourself to the Lord and you give yourself completely to him, you don't look at money the same way anymore. Okay? You don't look at possessions the same way anymore because everything is his. Everything is his. Okay? So it was accepted because it was offered according to God's instructions. It was accepted because it was a perfect offering. And number three, it was accepted because... He did it with a willing heart, with a willing heart. And number four, number four, even though Noah had many other things that he could have done, okay, uh, coming out of the ark after being in the ark uh, for all those days, there could have been other things more important in his mind that he could have thought, well, I need to do. You know, I gotta take care of my wife. I gotta, I gotta uh, work with my sons. Where are we gonna live? We need a place to live. We need to build a house. 
We need to uh, let the animals go. We need to do this. And a, a, a million things that he had in his mind that he had to do, but he did not do any of them because he first put God first. Okay? He put God first. And that's another lesson <coughs> we can learn. In Matthew 6, 33, Jesus said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Okay? The offering was accepted. It was a sweet, a sweet, the Bible says, a sweet smell, a sweet savor. Okay? It was a sweet savor. Okay? It was a, a wonderful fragrance in the nostrils of God. Okay? Uh, and so that led us to, to the reason for the message. That led us to the reason for the message. What is the reason? The altar. The altar. We're, we're talking about the altar. That's why we came here is because of the altar. Because it is the first time that uh, the word altar is mentioned in the Bible. And Noah is offering on, on the Bible. So the, uh, the altar is, is a place for offering. It's, it's an elevated place. It can be constructed with wood. It can be constructed with rocks and other materials, but it's a step and it's, it's pointing upward, okay? Um, the purpose of the altar is to offer sacrifices unto God. Uh, the altar was a high area made with stones and it pointed towards God, denoting that it is for God the Most High. It could be made of other materials. A burnt offering uh, was made unto God in whole or in part and it was done to atone for the transgression made or, or the law broken. And the person that brought the sacrifice, he brought it. And, and, and by bringing that sacrifice, the person was acknowledging his guilt. That they had broken God's law. And they were asking God for mercy to accept a substitute. Okay? Because remember, the law required death. For the wages of sin is death. And then the book of Ezekiel says, The soul that sinneth, that soul, soul shall die. So the law required death. And so uh, that means everybody would have to die. But God allowed them to, to, to substitute themselves with a sacrifice. So in giving that sacrifice, they were asking God to take a substitute for them. And God would accept the substitute. Okay? And... Uh, the person acknowledged their transgression and at the same time they received the mercy of the Most High. That was the purpose for the altar. Now Cain and Abel, they knew how to offer sacrifices upon an altar. Where did they get that knowledge? Well, they got it from Adam. Well, where did Adam get that knowledge? Well, remember Adam uh, walked with the Lord in the garden in the cool of the evenings. Okay. So they had many conversations, and this is how uh, uh, Adam received those instructions and uh, what God required of him. And so uh, they knew because the father Adam had taught them. No doubt all those times God and Adam met in the garden, the Lord took Adam, uh, told Adam about the sacrifices and the specific requirements and details. And we know that they were told because God is the designer God is the designer of the altar. Okay? It was not man. It was never man that designed the altar. God is the one that designed the altar. Okay? And how do we know that? Because there's a tabernacle in heaven. That's how we know that. There's a, there's a tabernacle in heaven. In Hebrews 8.5, in Hebrews 8.5, when uh, God tells Moses to build a tabernacle, he tells him this. <clears throat> It says in Hebrews 8, 5, who served unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. And Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, said he, that thou make all things according to the pattern, according to the pattern shown to thee in the mounts. According to the pattern shown to thee in the mounts. So uh, Moses uh, was shown the pattern of the altar in heaven. God showed it to him. And the, the construction of the altar, all the details and the measurements, everything came from them. So he was building uh, something on the earth that was uh, copying one that was already in heaven. Okay? And we know that because in Revelation 5, 6, it says, 
And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood, capital L, a lamb as it has been slain. A lamb as it has been slain. Where are you going to slay the lamb? On the altar. Okay? That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, in Hebrews 10, also in Hebrews 10, 11, the Bible says that every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. When you think about all the animals that died, when the people brought their sacrifices because they had sinned, can you imagine how many animals came to the altar? Why? Because they kept sinning. And the, the offering of the sacrifice wouldn't take their sins away, so they have to keep bringing animals. Animals, and the only thing the animal would be would like a substitute for the person uh, so that he wouldn't die, and it would, it would uh, 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 not clear him of his sins, okay? It says, which can never take away sins. But this man, Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, forever sit down on the right hand of God. That's the Lord Jesus. He became our sacrifice when he died on the cross for us. He became our sacrifice. One time, forever. And uh, he forgave us of our sins and he paid for the, the, <coughs> the, the death uh, debt, the death debt that we owe. He paid it for us. He took our punishment. He took our place. He was our a substitute when he died on the cross. So that brings us to the uh, importance of the altar. Remember, the altar is for offering sacrifices unto the Lord. Okay? So the importance of the altar. In the church, it allows us a place where we can humble ourselves and go and pray and thank and praise the Lord. That's the, that's the reason for the altar. That's the way it is used in the church. Okay? Now in the home, you can have uh, uh, you can you can make your own uh, altar at home. You can use a couch. You can use uh, uh, anything where you can kneel down and pray together as a family. You can use that as an altar. Many times, because uh, the church is full and the altars are full, people just turn around and make their chairs an altar. Okay, yeah, you can make an altar out of anything. And the purpose of the altar is to offer sacrifices unto the Lord, okay? So uh, we need to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. We must humble ourselves, like James 4.10 says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Now, there is no more sacrifices in Israel, okay? The temple was destroyed in 70 AD by the Romans. They stole the, all the gold and destroy uh, all the uh, the valuables and the, uh, and the temple and burn it down. And it was just like the Lord Jesus said in Matthew 26, when he said, there will not be left one stone upon another. It was destroyed, okay? So there haven't been sacrifices in Israel since uh, 70, uh, the year 70. Okay, so we're talking about uh, almost, almost 2,000 years almost 2,000 years, okay? Uh, so, what is the purpose for the altar here then? Well, remember, the purpose of the altar is to offer sacrifices unto God. And we see that uh, Noah offered on an altar and it was accepted by God. It was accepted just like the Lord Jesus sacrificed of himself for the whole world was accepted when he took the blood to God in heaven. When the Lord resurrected from the, from the grave, he took the blood, his blood, okay? And he took it back up to heaven to the tabernacle in heaven and he gave it to God the Father and God the Father accepted it as a substitute. And with that, he paid for the sins of every person in the world, okay? It was his blood. He was the sacrifice and the God the Father accepted his sacrifice. In Ephesians 5, 2, the Bible says, In walking love, as Christ also hath loved us, and had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. 
for a sweet smelling savor. All right, that sounds good and that's a good message, but what about the altar here, Pastor? What is that for? Remember the purpose of the altar is to offer sacrifices unto the Lord. But there haven't been any more sacrifices. We don't bring our little lambs to church anymore. We don't bring our lambs, our little lambs to the, uh, to the temple and slay them anymore and offer the blood. We don't do that anymore. So what do we do now? Well, I'm glad you asked. Look at Romans chapter 12. Look at Romans chapter 12. What do we do with the, with the, with the, uh, the altar now? Well, Romans tells us that, what we do with it. <clears throat> Romans chapter number 12. Romans chapter number 12, Paul, the apostle here, is writing to the church in Rome, and he says, I beseech you, which means I beg of you, I'm pleading with you. Uh, therefore, brethren, they're all Christians in the church of Rome there. There's a lot of Gentiles, there's a lot of Jews there, there's a lot of Romans. Uh, and he's writing to them, and he says, I beseech you, in Romans 12, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye, there it is, present your what? Bodies. Bodies. A living what? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Holy. Acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So what's the purpose of the altar? To offer sacrifices. And what is the sacrifice that we bring now to the altar? It's ourselves. We come to the altar and offer ourselves unto the Lord. How do we offer ourselves? We offer our bodies, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, okay? A living sacrifice, holy. We come to the altar, holy, and this is acceptable unto God. And it is a reasonable thing. Aren't you glad we don't bring little lambs to the, to the uh, temple anymore? We just bring ourselves. And we offer praises. We offer praises and offer praises unto the Lord. And the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. Okay? The purpose of the altar. So please be mindful to include an altar in your home. Uh, get together with your family in the evenings. When everybody settled down, open the Bible and talk to your children. Okay? Give a small devotion. Not have to be nothing deep or, or, or long. It, it, the attention span is very, very short, so keep it short. But pray together. Go on the altar and pray together. Thank the Lord for what he's done for you on this day. Amen? That's the purpose of the altar. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord God, for uh, the simple outline of the altar. Thank you, Lord God, that you received. Lord God, you received us. Lord, I am so glad that you received me, Lord. I had nothing to offer you but my sins, and yet you still look for me, you love me, and you never gave up on me, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you for not giving up. Thank you, Lord God, that I can come willingly and thank you and offer my praises to you. And thank you, Lord God, for giving us an altar. And thank you, Lord God, for everything that you have done so good to us. Thank you for the rejo rejoicing that you bring into our lives. Thank you that uh, we are together again as the family of God. We love you. We thank you. And we ask now these things, Father, in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The altars are open and you want to come and pray.